morning children please sit down yes teacher please tell us a story okay sit down so you are all eagerly waiting to listen to a story yes teacher okay let me think what story could i tell you okay i'll tell you a story of a wise man called ramana but on one condition you have to listen to me very carefully and then you are going to answer some questions okay teacher now listen to me very carefully once there was a wise man called ramana he wanted to speak to the king secretly one day he got a chance to meet the king secretly and then he wanted to ask the king that he would like to speak to him privately every day in front of all the others who gathered in the court now he requested the king to spare at least 5 minutes for him every day so that he could speak to him privately in front of all the courtiers and he also told the king that he would pay 500 gold coins daily now the king was not in need of any money but his curiosity was aroused the king wanted to know why ramana wished to talk to him and what he wished to talk and why was he ready to pay 500 gold coins every day and the king also wanted to know how long will ramana pay him that money now with this curiosity in his mind the king agreed and after that ramana visited the king every day when all his courtiers were in his court and he sat very close to the king and spoke were in a very friendly manner with the king and all the courtiers would watch him and they thought that he was a very close friend of the king and as he spoke to the king ramana would look at some of the courtiers who were there in the court and pretend as if he was talking about a particular person in the court and when the courtiers observed this for some time they thought that he was talking about one of them in the court and specially all those ministers in the king's court who took bribes and who did something wrong started feeling guilty they thought that ramana knew about their habits and he was talking about them to the king so the courtiers who were involved in taking bribes and other wrong deeds got scared and they started giving ramana lots of money they gave him hundreds of gold coins and asked him to keep quiet and in this way after some time ramana gained 500 crores of gold coins and he also paid 500 gold coins every day to the king but one day he spoke to the king about what was happening in the kingdom he told that he has earned a lot of money from all those ministers who were taking bribes and doing something wrong and he also requested the king not to punish those ministers and officials because he said that they have changed and they have become good and honest people the king was very happy to hear this he praised ramana for changing so many people into honest and good people and he said that he wanted ramana to work for him as his prime minister then at last he appointed ramana as his prime minister that's a nice interesting story isn't it yes teacher now as i have told you you have to answer my questions now are you all ready with the answers yes teacher now here is the first question who wished to speak to the king secretly ramana yes that's correct ramana wished to speak to the king secretly how long did he wish or did he want to speak to the king every day 5 minutes yes he wanted to speak for 5 minutes secretly to the king how much money did he promise to pay the king 500 gold coins yes correct 500 gold coins every day do you think ramana was a fool no no he was not a fool he was a very wise man we know that now another question but now i want one of you to answer this question what did the courtiers think of ramana they thought that he was very close to the king that's correct sit down 
they thought that Ramana was a very close friend of the king. Now the last question, yes one of you, what did Ramana become in the end? He became the king's prime minister. That is good, sit down. So Ramana finally became the prime minister in the king's court. So children, you see that when you are honest, when you have a good intention, you will get good things and you will also have a lots of benefit in the end. So remember to be good and honest. Children, that was an interesting story and you all answered the questions very well. Now I was planning to teach you something more interesting. I was trying to teach you a new language item. For that, I prepared this chart. Now look at this carefully. Now who is seen in the picture? A woman. A woman, that's correct. What is she doing? She is waiting for the bus. She is waiting. Okay, most probably I think for the bus. There is a bus stop over there. I think she is waiting for the bus. And here it is written that waiting from 3 p.m. She has been waiting from 3 p.m. for the bus. How, when did she come to the bus stop? At 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Yes, that is correct. She came to the bus stop at 3 p.m. It is 4 now and she has been waiting there from 3 to 4. Now with this situation, I am going to write a sentence. Now this is a lady waiting in the bus stop and she came to the bus stop at 3 p.m. And she was there for almost one hour. So I can put it in a sentence. Now look at this sentence which I write on the board. Okay, now we have seen that here is a lady waiting in the bus stop from 3 p.m. And she waited till 4. So I can put it this way. The woman has been waiting for the bus since 3 p.m. Now look at this sentence carefully. The woman has been waiting for the bus since 3 p.m. Now look at this word since. Now we use the word since when we are talking about a particular period or point of time. Here we are talking about when she came and from which point of time she has been waiting. That is from 3 p.m. she has been waiting. So we use the word since when we talk about a particular point of time. And we can also put it in a different way. I can say the woman has been waiting for the bus for an hour. How long did she wait? For an hour. For one full hour she waited for the bus. So for is used when we talk about the duration of time. That is one hour here. So she has waited for one whole hour for the bus. So when we talk about the duration of time, we use the word for. When we talk about a particular point of time, we use the word since. Now I'll read these sentences once again for you. Listen to me carefully. The woman has been waiting for the bus since 3 p.m. That is a particular point of time. The second sentence, the woman has been waiting for the bus for an hour. That is for a period of one hour. When you talk about the duration of time, use for. When you talk about a point of time, use since. Now let us look at a very interesting conversation. Have a look at them and listen to them carefully. Hi Rakesh. Hi Praveen. Oh, why are you so late? I have been waiting for you since 3 o'clock. You know that? Sorry Praveen, I missed the bus. That's the matter. I see. But why are you looking so tired? I've been cycling all the way from home. You know, I promised to be here by half past 3. How long did it take to reach here? Oh, it's just half an hour. And how long will it take to go to Ali's house? It takes just 20 minutes if we go by bus. Okay, park your cycle there. Hurry up, we have to go to his house. He said that he has been waiting for us since an hour.
How long will we stay with him? There we'll have a nice time and we'll go to park circus with him. How long will the circus show be? About two hours. Okay, now what is Ali's father doing? He has been working in the Indian Army. How long has he been working in the Army? He has been in the Army for 15 years. Oh. Where is he staying now? He is staying in Jammu and Kashmir. Okay. Did he come for his son's birthday party? No, it seems he sent some gift for Ali. Okay, Praveen, let's move fast. Now, children, we have observed the conversation between the two friends. I hope you all listen to them carefully. Yes, teacher. Even I have listened to them very carefully and noted down some of the sentences they used in the conversation. And I think these were the sentences they spoke. I have been waiting for you since 3 p.m. This was the first sentence. Then, I have been cycling all the way from home. Then they asked some questions like this. How long did it take to reach here? And some more questions they used in the conversation were, how long Will we stay with him? How long will the circus show? He has been in the Indian Army. Now this was the conversation we have observed. Now children, observe carefully the usage of the words since and for in this conversation or in these sentences. Now as I told you earlier, we use the word since for a particular point of time and for when we are talking about the duration of time. Now here you have seen in the examples that I have been waiting for you since 3 p.m. That means a particular point of time they have been waiting. He has been waiting or she has been waiting. And then you also have come across another sentence saying that he has been working in the army for 15 years. Now here the word for is used to talk about a period of time or a duration of time that is 15 years. Now remember this very well when you answer my questions. Now I'll ask you a few simple questions and make use of these items which you have learnt that is the word since and the word for according to the question or according to the time you are going to speak. Now the first question, Raju how long have you been staying in this village? Teacher, I have been staying here for two years. That's good. Sit down. Okay, now Sarla, how long will it take for you to reach your house from here? It will take 10 minutes, teacher. Oh, that's good. Sit down. Now one of you try to ask me a question using how long. Yes, one of you. Teacher, how long have you been teaching English? Okay, that's good. Sit down. So you want to know how long I have been teaching English. Okay, my answer is I have been teaching English for 12 years. Now children, you have all answered very well and you have also asked me a question using how long. Now I hope you all learnt how to make use of the word since and the word for. Use the word since for a particular point of time and use the word for when you have to talk about the duration of time. Okay children, now we look at some people who look somewhat different. Now look at them. Now you have seen them and they look different, isn't it? They are actually people who are dedicated. They are in the service of God and the society. We call them as nuns. Now you have seen a house where they were living or where they are living. Okay, that is known as a convent. A convent is a place where the nuns reside. Okay, convent is a place where the nuns reside. Residence of nuns. You know, these people whom we call as nuns, they live in convents away from their parents and others. They don't get married. 
they have no children of their own but they treat the whole society as their family and they are always ready to serve these people especially the needy people needy and the poor people now let us have a look at such a place <laughs> that the place is very dirty. Now we call such places as slums. Slum ante muriki vadalu. Now you have seen the people over there. They are all very poor. Now how is their living condition? Yes. They are living in huts. They have no proper clothing. They, they do not have proper food. They do not have a school. That's correct. Sit down. So they don't even have a school. Now we have seen that their conditions are very poor. The living conditions are very poor. They are living in huts and they're too thatched. Huts, broken huts, broken houses, very small rooms and they don't have proper food, they don't have proper clothing and they don't even have a school. And they need to improve a lot. And they need help also for their improvement. Improvement and abhivruddhi. Valani abhivruddhi parchadan ki Sahayam Kavalan Mata. Improvement Abhivruddhi. So we have seen that these nuns who are living in the convents, who don't get married, are very dedicated people and they keep serving these people in slums. Most of them go to their places and serve them and help them to get education, help them with proper food, clothing and other things and they try to improve the conditions of these people living in the slums. Now children, do you remember your lesson, an act of bravery? Yes, teacher. The hero of that lesson, Shankar? Yes, teacher. Okay, now what did he do? What was the act that made him very popular? He acted bravely and helped the police to catch the thief. That's correct. Sit down. He helped the police to catch the thief who were there robbing of his shop. You remember that lesson, isn't it? Okay. Now, brave means to be able to face. Having the courage to face something, pain or to endure some danger. Able to face some danger. Dhairyamu. Brave means dhairyamu. Now I have a picture of a man who has done a very great thing for his society. Now look at him. Yeah, you have seen a very rich old man. Now you know this man has founded a school for his village. Because there was no school in his village and he has founded a school for his village. Founded and is taap in chadam. Now children, you have learned the meanings of some new words here. Convent, residence of nuns, slum, murikivada, improvement, abhivruddhi, brave, dhairyamu, founded, stapinchuta. Now in any society, we find some people who dedicate their lives for the improvement of the poor people and they are always ready to help them. So similarly, we have some good people in every society who work for the benefit of the society, who try to uplift the society, who work for poor and needy people. Now can you name one such person? Mahatma Gandhi. Yes, he worked for the poor of our country and he also served for the society. Can you tell me one more person who worked till recently? Mother Teresa. Teresa, yes, Mother Teresa. Now you can have a look at their pictures here. Mahatma Gandhi, who worked for the whole nation. He worked for our freedom also, isn't it? He was the 
he is known as the father of the nation who worked who struggled for our freedom then we have mother teresa who worked for poor people not only poor she worked for orphan people orphan children who did not have parents children who did not have mother father she worked for them she worked even for lepers people who suffered from very dreadful diseases children shall we learn about her life in our lesson mother teresa take out your readers turn to page 156 i shall read the first and second paragraph for you listen to me carefully and you know while i'm reading you will also look into the readers and silently follow what i am reading look into page 156 mother teresa mother teresa was born in skopje in yugoslavia on august 27 1910 her parents were albanians she joined a convent in 1928 and was sent to india through the bengal mission first to darjeeling and then to calcutta to teach at the loreto convent for about 17 years she led a sheltered life in the convent then one day she happened to see the slums of calcutta her heart went out to the people living there she decided to work for the improvement of their condition in 1946 she got permission to work in the slums with only 5 rupees in her pocket this brave woman learned a few basic medical skills and began to live among the poor she started her first school in the slums in 1948 in 1939 she founded the missionaries of charity now children you are going to read this lesson these two paragraphs silently as you know you are not going to murmur you are not going to run your fingers or your pencil or a pen along the lines you will read silently and you will read as quickly as possible now before reading you know i'm going to give you some pre reading questions and you are going to search for the answers while reading these two paragraphs now look at these questions where and when was mother teresa born second question To which places was she sent in India? Next question. How long did she lead a sheltered life? Read these questions carefully. Where and when was Mother Teresa born? To which places was she sent in India? How long did she lead a sheltered life? I'll give you two more questions. Fourth question: How did she feel when she saw the slums? Fifth question: What did mother decide to do? I'll repeat these questions: How did she feel when she saw the slums? Fifth question: What did mother decide to do? now while you read you will search for answers for these questions and remember read as fast as possible without moving your lips without running your fingers under the lines
Okay, children, you all have read the paragraphs carefully. Now you have to answer the questions. Now, where do you find the answer for the first question? Yes. First line, first para. That's correct. Now, what is the answer? Mother Teresa was born in Skopje in Yugoslavia on August 27, 1910. That's good. Please sit down. So, she was born, Mother Teresa was born in a place called Skopje in Yugoslavia on 27th August in the year 1910. Where do you find the answer for the second question? Yes, here. Fourth and fifth land, first para. That's correct. Now give me the answer. She was first sent to Darjeeling and then to Calcutta. Please sit down. Good. Okay, now she was first sent to Darjeeling and then to Calcutta in England. That's correct. Search for the answer to the third question. Yes? Correct. First line of second para. That's correct. Now read out the answer. Mother Teresa led a sheltered life in the convent for about 17 years. That's true. Sit down. The fourth question. Yes, yourself. Third line of second para. Yes. Now give me the answer. Her heart went out to the people living in slums. That's good. Sit down. Now the last question. Yes, yourself. Fourth line of second para. Give me the answer. Mother decided to work for the improvement of their condition. That's correct. Sit down. Now children, you got the answers for all the five questions, that's very nice and you also have learnt how to find out the answers for the questions. I am very happy that you answered the questions very well. Ok, now children, I will ask you some questions for which you are going to give me the answer in a word or a phrase. Be very short. The first question, who were Mother Teresa's parents? That's correct. Good. Albanians. They were Albanians. When did Mother Teresa join the convent? In 1928. That's correct. In 1928. Where did she teach? At the Loreto convent. Yes. She taught at? Good. She taught at Loreto Convent. That's correct. Now some more questions. When did she get the permission to work in the slums? In 1946. That's correct. In 1946. Next question. With how much money did she start working? 5 rupees only. Yes, only with 5 rupees in her pocket she started working. That's very good children. When did she start her school in the first school in the slums? In 1948. That's correct, in the year 1948. Now, what did she establish in the year 1950? The Missionary of Charity. That's good. She started her Missionaries of Charity. That's correct. Now, children, I'll ask you a few more questions, but very simple ones. You are to, going to answer it as true or false. I'll give you a statement. You are going to tell me whether it is true or false. Okay, the first statement. Tell me whether it is true or false. Mother Teresa's parents were Albanians. Yes, it is true. 
that's correct it is a true statement her parents were albanians it is a true statement next one she joined convent in 1928 that's good it is true she joined in the year 1928 it is a true statement another statement she did not feel pity for the people in the slums no it is false no it is false she actually felt very sorry for their condition she felt pity for their condition and then she wanted to work for them no it is false the next statement for you she did not start her first school in the slums false you are all correct children that was a false statement because we know she started her first school in the slums in the year 1948 no it is false so children you all understood well and you have answered the questions also well now shall i give you a small simple homework okay okay take it down in your notebooks and i know you all can answer these questions because you have already answered them write it down first question when and where was mother teresa born second question how did teresa start working in the slums next question what site moved her while living in calcutta next question when did mother teresa establish the missionaries of charity okay children a few more sentences i'll give you you just have to fill up the blanks okay I write them down fill in the blanks with suitable words i'm going to give you two words for each blank you have to choose the correct one mother teresa's parents were dash in the brackets you have two words to choose choose the correct one albanians english next sentence mother teresa was sent to india through the leave a blank mission the words given are bihar bengal next sentence she taught at the loreto dash the words convent school the fourth sentence one day she happened to see the leave a blank of calcutta in brackets write down the two words colonies slums fifth sentence she decided to work for the dash of the poor people the words given are improvement important last sentence she started her first dash in the slums in 1948 in brackets write down convent school i hope you all can easily answer these questions then shall we meet again